the walk back to King's Landing was just as long and dangerous for King Baylor as the journey to Sunspear was, if not more so. When he mounted the Boneway and word of it reached Sunspear, many at the court of the Prince of Dawn were very surprised that King Baylor had made it that far. In many ways, the hardest part of the King's journey was over. There was one very testing task left for the King. To keep the promise he had made to the imprisoned Prince Aemon, the Dragon Knight, to return for him and free him from his captivity at the hand of Lord Will. Given the time that had passed since Baylor had last seen the prince, there was a strong possibility that Aemon could have died from exposure to the harsh environment of Dawn. Now through the desert, King Baylor turned his attention to recovering Prince Aemon from his imprisonment. During one of his many meetings with the Prince of Dawn to secure peace between the Seven Kingdoms and Dawn, King Baylor had asked the Dornish prince to explicitly command the Dragon Knight's release, and this Lord Will accepted. But there was always an element of Dornish trickery hiding beneath the words of Lord Will. When King Baylor finally reached the castle of the Wills, the truth of this trickery would come to light. But King Baylor had expected as much. Lord Will, instead of freeing Prince Aemon himself, at the moment the Prince of Dawn commanded him to do so, he waited for the ragged, blessed king to reach his castle. When Baylor asked for Prince Aemon, Lord Will simply threw a rusted key at the feet of Baylor. This was the battered key to Aemon's cage. With a smirk, Lord Will told the king that the Dragon Knight was free to leave and gave Baylor an invitation to use the key. It was not going to be a simple case of unlocking the prince's cage, as Lord Will had made sure to make the task as difficult and perilous as possible while at the same time technically obeying the command of his prince. The king was unmoved by the overconfidence of Lord Will, and showing no emotion, calmly walked towards the cage that held his cousin. It was only as he drew closer, the king understood the game Lord Will had played. Aemon was still in his small cage, naked and exposed to the hot sun by day and the freezing winds at night. He looked sickly thin, with his lips dry and cracked from lack of water, his famous silver Targaryen hair was a tangled mat and filthy. The cage was exactly the same as it was when King Baylor had spoken to Aemon on his trip to Sunspear when he made the promise to return. However, there was now one key difference, one that made the task of freeing him a perilous challenge. Lord Will had commanded that a deep pit to be dug beneath Aemon's cage. Placed within were countless deadly venomous vipers the kind whose venom had been used by Dornish assassins and even the faceless men of Bravos for centuries. If bitten, there is a strong possibility the king and the prince would be as good as dead, and both Baylor and Aemond knew this. The Dragon Knight is said to have begged for the king to leave him, to go and seek aid from the Dornish marches instead. In all likelihood, by the time Baylor reached the nearest marcher lords of House Dondarrion, it would be too late for Aemond. But the Dragon Knight knew that by doing so, he'd be saving the life of his king. But King Baylor the Blessed truly lived up to his name in the events that followed. While there is some vagueness in what exactly occurred next, we do know from the limited sources we have two accounts of events. From the limited sources we have access to, we know that Baylor is to have simply smiled at his cousin with grace and calm. He told the Dragon Knight in his soft voice that the gods and his faith in them would protect him from any harm that may befall him. Then, Baylor, without a moment of hesitation, stepped into the pit of vipers before him, to all but certain death. Later, the singers claimed that the vipers parted as the king approached, forming a clear path to his cousin's cage, bowing their head to the blessed king as he passed them. But thanks to the few historical sources we do have, we know that the truth of the matter was very much otherwise. Baylor was said to have been bitten half a dozen times while crossing to the cage. No path opened up. There was no bowing heads. Baylor did somehow reach Aemon's cage, and though he opened it, he nearly collapsed, but not before the Dragon Knight was able to thrust the door open and pull his cousin from the pit. It is said that with his strength waned, Aemon struggled to even manage that. The wills are said to have laid wages as Prince Aemon struggled to climb out of the cage, with Baylor flung across his back, and perhaps it was their cruelty that spurred him to climb to the top of the cage and make the long leap to safety. Prince Aemon carried Baylor halfway down the boneway before the village septon in the Dornish mountains gave him clothing and a donkey on which to carry 
the comatose king. Eventually, Aemon reached the watchtowers of the Dondarians and was then conducted to Blackhaven, where the local maester cared for the king as best as his abilities allowed before sending them on to Storm's End for further, more skilled treatment. And all the while, it is said Baylor was wasting away, still lost to the world. He only regained consciousness briefly on the way to Storm's End and then only to mutter a prayer. It was half a year or more before he was well enough to travel on to King's Landing, and in all that time, Prince Viserys managed the realm as King's Hand, maintaining Baelor's peace treaty with the Dornish. While the stories of the events at Castle Will often focus on the bravery of King Baelor the Blessed in his fearless and faithful rescue of his cousin, with many small folk retelling the tales of the singers rather than the historical truth, because in that historical telling, Aemon the Dragon Knight must also be applauded for his bravery in saving the king from his fate in the Pit of Vipers, and despite his poor physical condition, somehow managing to carry him for several days to help and safety. While the focus of this tale is always on Baelor, the truth is both the Blessed King and the Dragon Knight showed bravery, faith and loyalty saving each other that day. <laughs>